Or if you turn to Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. And we're going to start in verse 10. This is after King Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. And he wants, in verse 2, Then the king commanded to call the magicians, the astrologers, and the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans, for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. And he asked them to tell him what the dream was and to give the interpretation thereof. And then we'll start in verse 10. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore there is no king nor ruler that asks such things at any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. And it is rare; it is a rare thing that the king requireth. And there is none that can show it before the king except the gods who whose dwelling is not with flesh. Remember that. For this cause the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain that they, and they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Verse 14, Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. He answered and said to Arioch, the king's captain, Why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Arioch made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired the king that he would give him time, that he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went, and went to his house and made the, the thing known to Hananiah, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Yeshua, Jehovah, we just come to you this afternoon, and I pray, Yah, for your Chodesh Ruach. I pray for your Holy Spirit, and I pray for your grace and your help, because without you, Yeshua, Yeshua, the arm of the flesh will fail. There is not a man on the earth, Jehovah, that can know the things that are given to us freely of thee, but by the Holy Spirit, Jehovah. And I pray, Jehovah, you give us eyes to see and ears to hear, and bless this message. Use it for your glory and your honor and your praise. I pray to show you Jehovah in that precious name. So be it. So here in the book of Daniel chapter 2, he has a dream. The king Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. And he asks for the Chaldeans, the magicians, the astrologers, the wise men of his kingdom to tell him not just the interpretation but the dream itself. And in verse 10, the Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asks such things at any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. And it is a rare thing that the king requires, and there is none other that can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. So the king gets mad and he wants to destroy him. The king wants proof. The king wants to know what he's paying these people for. Why does he keep keeping them alive? These so-called wise men. He's trying to get the answers he, he wants. And he knows they can make up any single thing by just giving an interpretation. So he wants them to tell him what they dreamed also. And these, these people, these Chaldeans, magicians, the astrologers, they knew they couldn't do it. And they knew that no man could do it. But only God himself can do it. So they wanted proof. He wants proof. And they knew that Man could not do it. And then in verses 14 through 18, Daniel, he knows that Yeshua, Jehovah, can give the interpretation. And so in verses 19, then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. He, they prayed. They asked Yeshua, show us the vision. Show us the dream so that we don't die. Then the, was the secret revealed unto Daniel. Notice it's revealed to his children. God doesn't hold it back. He reveals it to Daniel and his companions. Unto Daniel in the night vision, then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are His. All wisdom and all might are His. There's not anything a man or any angel or anyone has, but the wisdom, all wisdom and might is His. Verse 21, he says, 
and he changeth the times of the, and seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in darkness and the light dwelleth with him. Then he thanks God. He says, I thank thee and I praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who hast given me wisdom and might and hast made known unto me what we desired of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. So then he goes in before the king and he tells him. And if you jump to verse, verse 46, then the king, after Daniel tells him what the dream and in the interpretation, then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet orders unto him. The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth, it is that your God is a God of gods and Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal this, this secret. Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts. And he made him ruler. And that's how uh, he got promoted. So anyway... King Nebuchadnezzar, a Gentile, acknowledge, acknowledges God. And then if you turn to, we'll turn here in a bit to Matthew chapter 16. But King Nebuchadnezzar, he, he understood and he acknowledged. He says, he says to Daniel, he says in verse 47, Then the king answered unto Daniel and said, Listen to what he says. Of a truth, it is that your God is a God of gods and Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal the secret. It wasn't Daniel. It was the Holy Spirit. He, he acknowledges God. He says, of a truth, it is your God. He is the God of gods. He says, of a truth. Remember those words, of a truth. Jehovah Yeshua is revealer. Time and time again, man comes to this place of acknowledgement. Here was a hard-hearted king. He didn't believe anything. He wants proof. He, and he was going to test them. And he knew that they would fail. And he said, well, now, now, now I don't need them anymore. Because they're not going to be able to do it. So he, 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 he seeks to slay them. But then, time and time again... The true saints of God, they witness to, to the lost and miracles are done and the truth is revealed and they see that this is, tr this is all the truth. What Daniel, Daniel, Daniel's God, the God of heaven and earth revealed is of a truth. He is the only and true and living God. This is the place that over and over, time and time again, man comes to. Of a truth, Jehovah is the one and true only God. Of a truth, Yeshua is the Mashiach. He's the Christ. He's, he is God in the flesh. As Yeshua asked the apostles, turn to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 16. Gospel of Matthew chapter 16. Yeshua, when they're going up to the Mount of Transfiguration, in Matthew chapter 16, verse 13, when Yeshua came into the coast of Caesarea Philipp Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? What is, what, he, want, he asked them, what, what are people saying of me? He wants, he, he, he's asking his apostles because they hear all the talks of the people. They, some believe, some don't. Some say he's Elijah. Some say he's, uh, he's one of the prophets. But he says to his disciples, he asked them, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? See, he's going to ask them, Where's their faith? He wants to know, What do you think of me, Yeshua said? This is, earth, this is in his ministry on the earth. Yeshua is doing a work in man's heart. He's sowing the seed of the Word of God. And the Word of God, He gives the parable over and over. Go read the parable of the sower. Only in a true and honest and good heart. A heart, a believing heart. A heart where the Word is mixed with faith. Will it bring forth fruit? 
unto eternal life. Just because you see miracles, I'm going to give a warning. Just because you see it doesn't mean you're a believer. And I'm going to show you scriptures. You must have saving faith and knowledge in Christ. Repent of your sins. Keep the Torah. Go get Return to Yeshua, Jehovah, your heavenly Father. And obey His commandments and believe the all angel eye on the good message of all ages. Matthew chapter 16 verse 15. And He saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Yeshua answered and said unto him, listen to what he answers. Listen, and this is the truth. Understand that this is the only way you're going you're to understand and believe the gospel. Yeshua says, answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my ecclesia, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Then he char then charged his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Because the work that has to be done in men's heart has to be not, it has to be done by one person at a time. It has to be that person coming to saving faith. You don't get saved because your mom and dad believe. You don't get saved because half the church are believers. You don't get saved by anyone else but by your own heart's belief of the gospel. Repentance towards sin and faith towards Yeshua. And this saving faith is a work of the Holy Spirit. Flesh and blood cannot reveal it unto you. You're not going to reason your way. This scripture is not some formula. It's not some like the Methodist. It's not some method. It's not some ritual. It's not some re repetitive prayer. It has to be the work of Christ. It's not of anything that man can do. It's not of this building. It's not of this world, this cosmos. It's not of this catesis. It's not made with hands. Your faith is in God eternal. He makes, He gives you that saving faith. He, he builds in you a new creature. You're being born again of Him. Flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And Yeshua says, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. The same truth that Nebuchadnezzar comes to you in Daniel. He says, Then the king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth, it is that your God is a God of gods and Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou, thou couldst reveal the secret. And Daniel prayed it. He says, Then was it, he says, Then would he desires the mercies of the God of heaven concerning the secret. Verse 19, Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel. In a night vision, and Daniel blessed the God of heaven. And Daniel said, answered and said, Blessed be the name of God, Jehovah, forever and ever, for wisdom and might are His. Of a truth, flesh and blood must reveal to you the gospel. It is not of man. It's never been of man. There's no man, no counselor, no wise man, no scribe nor magician, nor Chaldean that can come to the saving knowledge of Christ. It's only by the work of the Holy Spirit. Turn to the book of Romans, chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. The Apostle Paul is writing to the Gentiles in uh, church in uh, Rome. He's writing in Romans 15, verse 1. He says, We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Some have strong faith, some don't. Verse 2, Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you 
It's given, give unto you, grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Yeshua, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God, even the Father of our Lord Yeshua Mashiach. Wherefore, receive ye one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God. And then he continues in verse 8. Now I say that Yeshua Mashiach was a minister of the circumcision, meaning the Jews of the seed of Israel, for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made unto the fathers, the prophecies, the promises given since the world began, given to Abraham, given to, to the children of Israel, through the prophets, through Moses. Then he says in verse 9, And that the Gentiles might glorify God for His mercy, as it is written, For this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles, and sing unto thy name. And again he saith, Rejoice ye Gentiles with this people. And again praise Jehovah all ye Gentiles, and laud him all ye people. And again Isaiah saith, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles. In him shall the Gentiles trust. In him shall the Gentiles believe of the root of Jesse, the son of David, the Mashiach. Verse 13, then the Apostle Paul writes, he says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. How are you going to abide and have hope and peace and joy in believing? How are you going to have it? How are you going to abound in hope? Through the power of the Holy, Holy Ghost. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 14 he writes, And I myself am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able to admonish one another. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you in some sort, as putting you in mind because of the grace that is given to me of God, that I should be a, the minister of Yeshua Mashiach to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Again, how is the Gentiles grafted in? How are they made? How are they saved in Yeshua? Being sanctified or the work set apart by the work of the Holy Spirit. Being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. I have therefore... Therefore, whereof I may glory through Yeshua Mashiach in those things which pertain to God. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me, to make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed, through mighty signs, and the apostles did mighty signs, including the Apostle Paul, through mighty signs, Nebuchadnezzar asked for the sign, you give me the sign, you prove to me that you can tell me the dream, and you can interpret it. Then I'll believe. Show me the proof. Apostle Paul says, Through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Holy of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Elycrium, I fully preach the gospel of Christ, the good message of the ages, the all angel ion. Yeshua works with he worked with the apostles and he continues to work today. Working in men's hearts by the word of God and by the preaching. And the word must be mixed with faith. The rain that comes upon it, upon an honest and good heart, it is grown by the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the only way you're going to be saved. God works in you. It's God that does the work that no man may boast, that no man may say, look, I educated myself and I studied all the scripture and I, and I graduated with this, with this grade and I came to this knowledge and therefore look at me, look at my faith. No, it's of God that no man may boast. You have faith, have it to yourself and to God. Have it, have, be thankful that he's revealed to you that you have that you are God, one of God's elect, His chosen, whom He foreknew. God who's working in you. The good message of the ages is before time. Christ is the Lamb slain from before the foundation of the world. That's His prothesis, His pro plan, His thesis, His plan of salvation before there was time, before there was a heaven, before there was an earth. There is no wise man, no scribe, 
no astrologer, no magician, nor, nor Chaldean that can come to saving faith by any of man's power, by anything that he, he, he knows or does. In verse 19, through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, the Apostle Paul says, so that from Jerusalem and round about unto Elycrium, I fully preach the gospel of Christ. It's by the power of the Spirit of God. Turn to the gospel of Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. And we're going to look at verse 10. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days? That, it might, that they might accuse him. And Yeshua said unto them, What man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep, and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, that he will not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Then saith he to the man, Stretch forth thine hand. And he stretched it forth, and it was restored whole like as the other. Here he just did a miracle. His hand was withered. If you ever see that, uh, uh, people with these kind of uh, diseases or whatever it is, they can't make their hands straight. It's withered. They're, they're either born that way or something happened to them. Yeshua does a miracle before them. Listen to what these children of Satan do, these unbelievers, these wicked Pharisees do. In verse 14, Then the Pharisees went out and held counsel against him, how they might destroy him or murder him. But when Yeshua knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Healed. He did miracles, signs and wonders, miracles before people. And you're telling me not everyone believed. No, not everyone still believed. In verse 16, And he charged them that they should not make him known, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he will show judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not strive, he's not going to strive, nor cry, he's not going to yell. Neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. A bruised reed shall he not break, and smoking flax shall he not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. And in his name shall the Gentiles trust in his name shall the Gentiles believe. The Gentiles. This is fulfilled in Christ. We as Gentiles believe in Christ. Since the gospel has been preached. Even there in the Old Testament where Nebuchadnezzar. When he cast him into the uh, fiery furnace. He beholds again another sign. A fourth man in the fire. He says look another. I see another man moving. One like the son of God. Nebuchadnezzar was a believer. He was a Gentile. God worked on his heart to bring him to a place of faith. And I believe King Nebuchadnezzar did get saved. He did show that he believed. But we'll see when we get to heaven. So here in the Gospel of Matthew, Yeshua does miracles. And the Matthew, he writes the, the prophecies of Isaiah the prophet, Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved in whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. The work of the Holy Spirit. Yeshua says, I must go about my father's business. My father works, and I work hitherto. I have meat to eat that ye know not of. For this is the reason I came. He came to go to the cross, to, if the, and if I, Yeshua says, the Son of Man be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. How does He draw you? Through the Holy Spirit. By saving grace. By saving faith. By the work of the Holy Spirit. Turn to the Gospel of Mark. You have faith and repentance in, to Christ. Gospel of Mark. Chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, and we're going to look at verse 5. So Mary Magdalene, 
And we'll start in verse 1. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, had bought sweet spices and they, that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that stone was rolled away, for it was very great. The stone that was laid in Zion. You stumble at that stone, it will grind you to powder. Remember those prophecies and remember that word. Verse 5, And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were frightened. They were afraid. And he said unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Yeshua of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him, as he said unto you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulcher, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Now when Yeshua was risen early, the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And she went and told them that had been with him as they mourned and wept. And they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen her, they what? These are the apostles. They what? They believe not. Even though Yeshua says, destroy this temple in three days, I will rebuild it without hands. Even though Yeshua says, the Son of Man is betrayed into the, the hands of the chief priests and they're going to crucify Him. Even though Yeshua says He's going to rise from the dead the third day. Even though the apostles saw all the miracles, even they themselves did miracles, even they themselves cast out devils, even they themselves did healings, even they themselves seen signs and wonders and the mighty works, when they heard the report of Mary Magdalene, they believed or not. Okay? They didn't believe. Verse 12, And after, and after that He appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. The, the, the road to Emmaus. He upbraided them okay, in another gospel for their unbelief. Verse 13, and they went out and they went and told it unto the residue or the rest of them. Neither believed they them. So you got two or three witnesses now. You got four or five witnesses now. And the apostles, they're still not believing. They're not believing because they're not seeing that for themselves. That's the problem. They all become doubting Thomases. They've all become unbelievers. They're all like, we won't believe their, their witness. Why? Because they're full of pride. Why would God show them and not us? Why would God show them first? Why would Yeshua go to them first and not us? They're, they didn't receive, they didn't believe the report. Verse 14, Afterward, He, Yeshua, appeared unto the eleven as they sat at meat and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart because they believed not them which had seen Him after He was risen. He sets them straight. Many times, you want to go back to seeing. You want to see the signs. We walk by faith. The just shall live by faith. What does the book of Hebrews say? And, and if he turn back, the book of Hebrews says, My soul, Jehovah says, shall have no pleasure in him. Jehovah looketh down from heaven seeking and looks upon the sons of man to see if any did understand that any did seek him, that he might go and reveal himself to them. God the Father has pleasure in his children having faith in him. He seeks it. He desires it. Is there any that seek him? Is there any that understand? He gives grace. So he abrades them. Yeshua appears to the eleven as they sat at meat or food, Eating, and he abraded them for their with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. You don't believe the gospel, you don't turn from your sins, you're going to be damned forever in the lake of fire. 
Verse 17, And these signs shall follow them that believe. There's still going to be signs to work on unbelievers' hearts. He says, In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, if any shall drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, and they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. How's the gospel going to go out? Preaching and the Holy Spirit confirming the word and with signs following. Amen. And they went and they waited for 50 days after the Passover for power to be given them from heaven. And we're, we're here at the uh, uh, day of Pentecost, which is tonight, where you receive the power of God. And for 2,000 years, men have gone out and preached the gospel. All ages, understand all the nations in the past. Think about 2,000 years. Think about all the nations, all the cultures, all their false religions, all their history, all of it. Yet the gospel is still preached today. The gospel still goes out with power today. God still does miracles today. The Holy Spirit still works today. And men are preaching Christ and people are being saved still today. All right? God's word is with power. It's with signs following. It's the work of God. It's not of man. If man cannot do it, if this was of man, it would have failed uh, two years after Yeshua, uh, the, uh, after he went to the cross, it would have been done. It would have been forgotten. No one would have known about Christ Jesus. Nobody would have known about Christianity. No one would have known about the gospel. There would, there, there would, it would have been gone. But it's of God. So here in Mark chapter 16, they were afraid, verse 8. Then he appears in verse 12. And then in verse 14, afterward, he appeared unto the eleven also. He upbraids them for the hardness of their heart. You must mix the word with faith. That's, that's what the big book of Hebrews says. Now we'll, we'll, we'll have to get to that verse where it says, They all were baptized, but the word did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. In Hebrews chapter 11, it says, Cast not away therefore... In Hebrews chapter 10, I'm sorry, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. He's quoting the Old Testament. Then he says, but if any man draw back, my soul hath no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 39. But we are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. It's even though Yeshua told, appeared to some and said, go and witness to the eleven. They didn't believe him. Only when Yeshua came and appeared to them also, that the eleven believed. And Yeshua rebuked them. He abraded them. He told them, why are your hearts so hardened? Why are you not believing me? Why aren't you not trusting in me? Then he commands them to go into all the world and preach the gospel. And Yeshua still provided them power. For the people hearing it for the first time, for the nations that they would go out and preach to, they got Yeshua does a work. And His work is with the Holy Spirit, with signs following them. Again, it has to be by the work of the Holy Spirit. It cannot be by man. The arm of the flesh will fail you. You must mix the word with faith. Many of the believers or so-called followers, when you read about in the Gospels, they're the wrong kind of quote-unquote believers. Turn to Gospel of John chapter 6. Gospel of John chapter 6. In verse 1, it says, After these things Yeshua went over the Sea of Galilee, 
which is the Sea of Tiber- Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him because what? What did these people follow, the great multitude follow Yeshua for? Because they saw his miracles, which he did on, did on them, and that were diseased. And Yeshua went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was near. When Yeshua had then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him, he saith unto Philip, When shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to Philip, an apostle, for he himself knew what he would do. He said, and this he said to prove them. If you think God doesn't try your faith, yes, he does. If you don't think that God tries your heart, yes, he does. He tries the reins. He tries the heart to see what's in you. God's going to try you. You say you have faith today. God will test you. What, what, did, what did Yeshua warn the apostle Peter, Peter of? After Peter, after they came from the mount, after Peter professed, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Yeshua says, Flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto you. Yeshua tells him later, he says, Peter, Peter, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat. But Yeshua said to Peter, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, when you're strengthened back in faith, strengthen your brethren. Help your brethren out. We that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. We read that in Romans. Romans chapter 15. So here in the Gospel of John chapter 6, Yeshua says, Whence are we going to buy bread that they may eat? And this he said in verse 6 to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. And then he makes them sit down, and there was abundance of bread, and they took up fragments. In verse 12, when they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Yeshua says that nothing be lost. What did Yeshua pray? When he prayed in one of the Gospels, he says, I thank thee, O Father, I have lost none of them that thou hast given me. The the sheep were thine, and you've given them to me, and I've lost none of them but Judas, the son of perdition. He's lost none. He, he, He doesn't lose his sheep. He doesn't lose them. They don't He doesn't let them go astray. He doesn't let them wander off into the world. He doesn't let them go away from Him when they're weak, where the enemy comes and attacks them. He seeks them like a shepherd. Then He says, Gather up the fragments in verse 12 that that remain, that nothing be lost. Verse 13, Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments and far barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that that had eaten Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Yeshua did, said, This is of a truth. Here it is again. This is of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. They believed on him. They saw the miracle. They believed on him. What did King Nebuchadnezzar say? He says in Daniel chapter 2, verse 47, Then the king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth. It is that your God is a God of gods and, a, and is a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets. Seeing thou couldst reveal, thou couldst reveal the secret. Here they say the people when they saw the miracle of the twelve baskets of the fragments of the loaves. They said this is of a truth that prophet that should come into the world. Yeshua says whom do men say that I the son of man am? They say some Jeremiah. They say some Elijah. They say one of the prophets. But whom do ye say that I am? Where is your faith? Who do you say, Peter, that I am? Where is your faith? God's doing the work. God does do signs. God does do wonders. God will get you to a place of repentance. God will get you a place of saving faith. His grace, it's His work. It's not of man. If man, I've said this over and over before, if man can talk you into salvation then man can talk you out. I've seen over and over all these people that have been led by some man into some prayer. 
I see a lot of them. They're not around no more. They're, they've denied Christ. They prayed a prayer. They followed some prayer. It was just repeating some prayer. That's the danger of it. You repeat some other, somebody else's prayer. That's not faith. You're just repeating something like a parrot. You need to pray yourself. Answer yea, you yourself, at the straight gate. For verily I say unto you, many shall strive to enter in, to enter, but they shall not be able to. Verily, verily, Yeshua says, it is easier for a camel to enter into the eye of a needle than it is for this person to enter in. A Pharisee, a one who trusts in his own righteousness, one who trusts in his own uh, wisdom or knowledge. He says, Yeshua says, the publicans, the harlots, enter into the kingdom of God before you. Woe unto you, Pharisees. Woe unto you, Sadducees. You, you didn't believe John the Baptist. You didn't believe Moses. How are you going to believe my words? Of a truth, the confession is made over and over. You're going to see it. Of a truth, they come to a place. Of a truth, this is that prophet that should come into the world. This is the Christ. You see them. They, they see the miracles. They, they come to a place of acknowledging, truly, this is the, he is God of gods. He is King of kings. This is of a truth. This is that prophet that should come into the world. Turn to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 27. Where do we find this? Also, you find it in the, at the crucifixion. You find it where the centurion, after these miracles are done, after the earth quakes and the sun is darkened, and the veil of the temple is rent in two from the top to the bottom. Matthew chapter 27, verse 50. Yeshua, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in two from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. You wouldn't believe if, if, if someone you knew or someone centuries ago was risen from the dead and they're witnessing of Christ. You're not going to believe? Sure you would. And they came out and they appeared on the many. Verse 54. Now when the centurion and they that were with them watching Yeshua saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly true, and, and saying, Truly, of a truth, truly this was the Son of God. Flesh and blood did not reveal this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. They come again to a place of saving faith. That centurion that believed. They come to a place of saving faith. That they, they believe the O angel eye on the good message of the ages. Turn the gospel of John again. We'll look at chapter 5. Gospel of John chapter 5. And we'll look at verse 32. Yeshua says, There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know the witness which he witnesses of me is true. Who is he talking about? The Holy Spirit. And this is where, I don't care what you're hearing right now, I want you to hear the Holy Spirit. Not my voice, but the Holy Spirit. The witness that you need to hear is not man's voice. The witness you need to hear is the witness of the Holy Spirit. The Chod, Chodesh Ruah. Yeshua says in verse 33, Ye sent unto John, and he bare witness unto the truth. But I receive not testimony from man. Yeshua doesn't want it. He doesn't want the, the astrologers, the, the wise men, the Chaldeans, these educated the world to witness. He only wants the Holy Spirit. Man filled the Holy Spirit preaching the gospel and the Holy Spirit doing the work. Yeshua says, But I receive not testimony from man. But these things I say that ye might be saved. He was a burning and shining light. And ye are willing for a season to rejoice in his light. Speaking of John the Baptist. Then Yeshua says in verse 36. But I have greater witness than that of John. For the works which the Father hath given me to finish. The same works that I do bear witness of me. 
that the Father hath sent me, and the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Then he says to them, listen to what he says, and, I'm, and I've preached this before, and you have to understand what Yeshua is saying. He's talking to these people. He's saying, and ye have, ne- ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. He says, you Pharisees, you doctors of the law, you chief priests, he says to them, ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Because unless you hear his voice, and unless he shows you himself, he reveals himself to you, you're not going to have the saving faith. Then Yeshua says in verse 38, And ye have not his word abiding in you. For whom ye hath sent, him ye believe not. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. And ye will not come to me that ye might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye shall receive. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? How are you going to believe the words of Christ? How? By the work of the Holy Spirit. By humbling yourself. By coming to a place of repentance. By obeying His voice. By believing the gospel. By the Holy Spirit. The work of the Holy Spirit. Those scribes and Pharisees, they saw the same miracles everybody else did. Yet they still rejected Christ. Yet they still didn't believe on Christ. They saw the miracles of the man of the withered hand. And what did they do? Did they repent and believe in him? No. They sought how to destroy him. What does that tell you about their hearts? There are thorns and briars. They see and hear the word of God. And they are rejected. And they're nigh unto burning. The witness, the true witness, Yeshua says, I have greater witness than that of John. Yeshua says, I receive not the honor from men. Verse 41. Yeshua says, But I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. The love of God is the first commandment. Keep the first commandment and you're going to keep the rest. I preached that I don't know how long ago. If you keep the first commandment, you're going to keep the rest. Luke chapter... Gospel of Luke chapter 8. Gospel of Luke chapter 8. Verse 10. He gives the parable of the sower. And then what does he say after? In verse 9, his disciples asked him saying, What might this parable be? The parable of the sower. And what does Yeshua say? And he said, And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But to others in parables that seeing they might not see and hearing they might not understand. Unto you it is given. What was that dream? How did did Daniel get it? Did he get it because he was a wise man? No. He got it because God revealed the secret to him. God gave it to him. God showed it him. Yeshua says, Unto you it is given. It's grace. To know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables that seeing they might not see and hearing they not, might not understand. It's by grace. Turn to the Gospel of Luke chapter 5. Yeshua, He does miracles. In verse 15, But so much the more went there a fame abroad of Him, And great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed of him of their infirmities. Many people came to him for the healing. Many people came to him even for food. Not because they believed on Christ. Not because they wanted to be saved. 
but they wanted some benefit. They wanted something in return. They didn't want to obey the gospel. They didn't want to re-enter into the new covenant. They didn't want to believe in Christ. They came for to receive some gift. What does Yeshua do? Listen to what Christ does. What did I just read to you? He says, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others, why to the others? In parables that seeing they may not see and hearing, they might not understand. They have never heard His voice at any time, nor seen His shape. Yeshua knows those who are truly love God, those who truly want to be saved. To the others, what does He do? Luke chapter 5, verse 16. And He withdrew Himself into the wilderness and prayed. And it came to pass on a certain day, as He was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law, sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of Jehovah was present to heal them. These doctors and these Pharisees, they never came to the place of saving faith. Not all of them did. Few of them did, like Nicodemus, but not all. In verse 22 of the Gospel of Luke, Then they brought to him a man taken in palsy. Verse 18, verse 21. And the scribes and Pharisees began to reason. That's the problem. When you go like Adam, like Adam and Eve to the tree of knowledge of good and evil and you start to reason, you start to have intellect, you start to take faith and cast it aside and all you're going to do is reason and logic and reason and logic. This is the atheist way. This is the, the religion of the atheist is reason. And they start to reason. The scribes and Pharisees began to reason saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Yeah, duh. The one standing before you, Yeshua of Nazareth, is God alone. But they're unbelievers. They're reprobates. They harden their heart. They're like, well, our reasoning doesn't allow us to believe in the Messiah. That's the problem. Yeshua doesn't speak to them. That unto you, Yeshua says, is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but unto them in parables, for seeing they may not see, and hearing they might not hear and understand. So Yeshua withdraws himself. He doesn't deal with these type of people. The work of the Holy Spirit will not strive. It will not cry. He will not strive. For Yeshua, Yehovah says in Genesis, for my for my spirit shall not always strive with man, for he is but flesh. Flesh and blood cannot reveal the truth to you, but only by the work of the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 5, verse 22. But when Yeshua perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, He knows what's in every man, he knows their thoughts. What reason ye in your hearts? Whether it is easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven you, just to say it, Thy sins be forgiven you, or to say, Rise up and walk, but that ye may know, and here he rebukes them, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power upon earth to forgive sins. He said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy couch and go into thine house. And immediately he rose up before them, they're, uh, they're witnessing it, and took up that wherein he lay and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and they glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, We have seen strange things today. Yes, you have. God came to do a work. What does He say? A strange work. He does it, and He does it today. And however God works, He continues to work, because I know that this, the Word of God is with power. It's not of me. That's why I'm up here preaching. It's not of me. It's of Him it's of the work of the Holy Spirit. So we read those verses. And he says. In verse 31. And Yeshua answering said unto them. They that are whole need not a physician. But they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous. But sinners to repentance. And they said unto him. What, why do thy disciples of John fast. And make prayers. And likewise the disciples of the Pharisees. But. Dine, eat, and drink. And he talks about the bridegroom, how he's going to go away. Yeshua again and again 
does miracles and he abrades and he shows all men, but then he gives grace to the worthy. He gives grace to those who are seeking him and they get the saving faith. Turn to the Gospel of Matthew again. We got a few more verses. Gospel, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12. And we're going to look at verse 38. Then certain of the scribes and the, of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, calling them Master, giving them lip service, we would see a sign from thee. They want to see a sign. Verse 39, but he answered, Yeshua answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the wells' belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. Because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, a greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south shall rise up in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. When the unclean spirit is gone forth out of a man, he walketh through the dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I'll return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter into in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be unto this wicked generation. You want to know why this earth is gone literally mad? You want to know why you literally have in the government of the United States transsexual, a man that changed his sex, and people literally, so-called Republicans and Democrats, even churches, they don't even care. They have no judgment. Because why? They don't have the true light of the gospel in them. They don't have the true light of the Yeshua HaMashiach and the Holy Spirit in them. They have no judgment. What do they have? They have an evil spirit. They have the devil dwelling in them. The devil's taken them captive by his will and deceived them. Because if you reject the words of eternal life, you're going to have to have something dwelling in your heart. And if you don't have faith in Christ, I guarantee you've got something else. And that's something else that's not of God. And that something else is is of man, it's of demonic, it's of witchcraft, it's of magicians, it's of sorcery, it's of the things of the world, it's of reason, it's of decay, it's of perversion, it's of reprobation. Because the only reason the gospel is going out because to redeem man from the fall from the Garden of Eden and to make them born again in Him, to have the Word of God dwell in them, that they can be restored like God originally designed you, being born again, not of the corruptible seed, but by the word of God, which is incorruptible. Just like I preached last Sabbath on Psalm 119, it's all about the word of God abiding and dwelling in you. And in Matthew chapter 13, look at verse 9. Yeshua says, Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. How do you get these ears? To hear how? By the power of the Holy Spirit. By the Chodesh Ruach. Verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And he answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken even, taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's hearts is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, in their eyes they have closed, lest at any time 
They should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and, I, and should be converted and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. All right, let's pray.